Oh, you use a bunch of libraries and frameworks to get your apps made? Hold on, let me go get you a bottle, because you're not going to like this video. What's going on, everybody? It's your boy, Kilo Loco, and today I'm going to talk about why using libraries actually makes you worse as a developer. Now, this might be a shocker to you, but you actually probably shouldn't be using all of the different libraries and frameworks that you're adding into your project, all these little dependencies. You probably shouldn't be adding them in to your project, honestly. So let's talk a little bit about why libraries and frameworks exist in the first place and why you're able to add them into your projects as dependencies. Well, it all started long, long ago in a faraway place with a lazy developer. So as developers, we're generally lazy, and that's what actually makes us a pretty good developer is just being lazy, trying to find out what's the easiest solution for the problem, what makes the most sense for the problem, and try to make it as easy as possible. Thus, we're creating software that essentially makes a job easier in our lives, and that's why we get paid the big bucks. Oh yeah. So following this trend as being a developer, well, guess what? We want things to be so easy that we don't even want to have to write our own code anymore, and we just depend on other people's code so what we do is we get these dependencies we start using libraries we start using frameworks and then before you know it we barely even wrote any code we're just using a bunch of glue code that just sticks all this stuff together and bam there's your app and i applaud all of you that have made some money gluing together some frameworks that's what it's all about but at the end of the day it actually does make you a worse developer and the reason behind that is because if you're including all these different frameworks and libraries into your project you probably don't know what's going on behind the scene and this is the whole premise of why libraries actually make you a worse developer is because you're actually including code into your project that you don't necessarily know what it's doing so let's imagine that you actually didn't have access to any of these libraries or any of these frameworks or any of the dependencies tendencies that you're putting into your project, right? You would essentially have to figure out how to do all these things by yourself. And it's when you start doing all these things by yourself that you actually become a great developer. The reason for that is because you're actually learning how to do something that might be complicated. And sometimes it's not even that complicated. Like some of you guys are just throwing Alamo fire into your one screen app. It's not good. But essentially you're trying to do something that's very complicated in a very easy manner and you're trying to make your life easier. And hey, I get it. You're a developer, you're lazy, just like me, and you wanna get it done and you wanna get it done quickly. But how are you ever gonna increase your skill as a developer? How are you gonna increase the knowledge that you know about these different concepts that are used inside of this framework if you're always depending on it in order to get the job done? So what I would recommend is that you actually start doing some of these things yourselves. Now, I'm not telling you to go into your production project and rip out all your frameworks and start doing everything from scratch just wouldn't make sense and you might get fired. But what I am recommending is that whenever you start a new project or in your spare time, whenever you're coding, try to do whatever it is that you would normally do with the framework or a package that you would normally pull into your project. See if you can do that thing yourself, because if you can understand the concepts that are behind this framework, if you're able to implement it yourself and you're able to just find out why it is that this framework works, then you're going to be able to increase the amount of knowledge that you have because now it's like, hey, you understand what's going on under the hood of whatever framework or dependency that you're using, but you can choose whether it makes sense to go out and get that framework or you can just use the bits and pieces of that, that dependency and you can just code those things in yourself and it will probably save you a lot of space on your project. And for those of you that are using a bunch of dependencies, you should really check out the file sizes on some of these things because they can be quite large. You might be importing a whole lot of space into your project that you're probably not even using. And that's all I really want you to do is just try it. Try it out, see if you can do it yourself and see if you can implement whatever you're trying to import or whatever dependency you're using by yourself. That's all you gotta do. Maybe take a look at the code of the dependency, look under the hood, see if you can understand what's going on, see if you can understand why they're doing things that the, the way that they're doing it. Maybe even try to recreate the framework in your own image and see if you can you know, make a condensed version of it to only fit your needs. That might be super useful and it'll probably save you a whole lot of space and it'll give you a whole bunch of knowledge. All the knowledge.
So I know that there are some of you that are going to come at me and say, well, that just doesn't make sense, Kyle, because I actually use this framework that's done in, you know, C, you know, it's written in C. Well, there are actually a lot of cases where it doesn't make sense to do this, where it doesn't make sense to go out and start writing your own frameworks or to not use a library because some things have actually been battle tested. And the example that I'm referring to here is something like encryption. If you're dealing with something like encryption, where it's very important that you get all of it done properly and there's no room for error, then this is something that you definitely want to outsource to a dependency, some type of framework or library. And this is something that you don't want to play around with. It's definitely cool. If you want to go in and learn that topic, go look under the hood by all means. There's no problem with looking under the hood and trying to copy what they did, maybe even bring it to a native language if it's in a different language. But when it comes to something that's super important, it does make a lot of sense to to use a dependency because you cannot create something that's been out there and battle tested and that has been around for a couple of years and have it be as good as that other thing. Most of the time, you're just going to want to stick with that thing that has been battle tested, that thing that has gone through all the different use cases, and that's going to just save your ass at the end of the day. So just keep that in mind that there are a few cases where you do want to just absolutely use libraries, but that's usually only like a few libraries, just just maybe like one or two. You got 15 dependencies in your project, you're probably doing something wrong, you lazy developer. You shouldn't always be depending on dependencies because the problem is that one, you're just kind of grabbing something from who knows where, who knows how well it works. You're also not taking into account how large this dependency is when you're adding it to your project. It might be huge and you only need like one little piece of it. And lastly, something that I haven't really touched on is just the fact that some of these dependencies are going to break as time goes on. You know, uh, with software, there's always an update with, with something. And if that dependency, that library, that framework doesn't support that new update, well, then you're kind of stuck in this weird limbo place where things are kind of working, but they're kind of broken and you don't really have control over that code because it's not your code and you don't really know how to replace it because you never looked into how to fix it. So that can be a huge problem when you're depending on something and you don't really know how it works. And then there's an update that can be a problem, but that's pretty much it guys. I just want to make sure that you're going out there. You're trying to do some of these things yourself because relying on others isn't always guaranteed. It's also going to strengthen your knowledge when you do need to tackle a problem where a dependency just doesn't exist. And then you can always create your own frameworks as well, which would also be beneficial to other developers, in which case I'm going to tell those developers don't use your dependency, figure out how you made yours and then try to create it themselves in code if it makes sense. But overall, you really shouldn't be using that many dependencies unless you have like this fast coming deadline or unless it's something extremely important that you cannot get wrong no matter what, like encryption, something like that. Then that's the only time that it, you should really only be using dependencies. But try to go out there and build your own. All right, that's going to be all for today's video. Make sure you leave your thoughts in the comments below and hit that subscribe button. If you ain't subscribed, I don't know why. And go out there and keep coding passionately.